Right, let's keep moving. Wrong side for the chest. Oh. Oh yeah, three of six. I forgot about that. <clears throat> would it be hilarious if you could respawn that chest, but it's metal. I actually would not mind doing that, because I like that boss, so... I wouldn't mind doing an ascetic farm room where I have to fight him every time. You know, one farming run I did do back on PS3 was the, uh... The, the gank boss in Shulver. You know, uh, what are they called? The Harvel, Alva, and fucking... What's his face? I don't know. You know, them three. I used to do that fight a bunch back on PS3 because you know it was a uh, self, it was a self-sustaining uh, run because you got like two, one or like two or three ascetics each time, and you got like uh, you know three twink, three petrified dragonborn, and, and one slab. So it was a pretty good farming run, but the boss was annoying as hell to fight, you know. But yeah, I did that like a shitload of times to get plenty of twink and uh, petrified dragonborn. I wanted to do up all the boss weapons and shit. I really hope that with Dark Souls 3 they add a merchant who sells infinite everything. You know, just like we had the, the giant blacksmith in Dark Souls 1. Who sold infinite twinkling titanite. You really don't realise how much, like, that is missed until you play this. And you really, you know, you know, you see how horrible it is to acquire rare resources. Having merchants who sell everything is a must, if you ask me. And you know what? I still, I still have to say, have to say, I wonder what they, f what the fuck they were thinking with Bloodborne. You want to get one blood rock per playthrough. They probably didn't expect it to have much shelf life, honestly. At least that's my guess, because you know it's not that big of a game. Let's be honest. At least compared to Dark Souls One and Two, you know it doesn't, have, it doesn't even have that much potential for armor and fashion. There's not a lot of weapons. Yes, all the weapons are unique and cool, but there aren't many. You know, is what I'm getting at. So, it's as if they intended the game to just be like a hold all, a hold over or a stay over f until Dark Souls 3 hits, you know? Cause it definitely feels like it's not supposed to. Be I don't know, to me, it felt like a game it was, that was never intended to be played as long as a Dark Souls game was. And, you know, as a, uh, as a for my aforementioned issue with getting one fucking blood rock per playthrough, just fuck that shit. I mean, that really pissed me off. Can I not? No. So, you know, let's hope we can get infinite. Like, at least we can farm, you know, whatever is a uh, plus 10 item in Dark Souls 3. You know, like, we can farm slabs in this game with the, uh... The, uh... The, the stone soldiers. And, uh... You know, I... Because I'm not sure how the Twink system... How the Titanite system's gonna work in DS3, I hope. I hope they keep it fairly simplified like it is in this game, because I actually, you know, I think the, that the idea of having, like, just one, like, two forms of Titanite is much better, personally. I think that the simplified resource system is a much better idea. And it seems like they do want to do that, because they did it with Bloodborne, you know, it was just one, um, literally just one upgrade item, you know, it was, well, one type of upgrade item. You know, Bloodstone Shards and stuff. And I think that's a much better idea, personally. But as I said, I like I, I, from what I understand, it is possible to get blood rocks in uh, dungeons, but it's random. And you know what, guys? I'm going to shamelessly admit this. Uh, pardon me. When Bloodborne first came out, I u I did use the dupe glitch to dupe all my blood rocks, and I do not regret it because fuck that bullshit. You know, I want to be, I want to have all max shit on one character, and I want to experiment with other characters. That's generally how I play these games, you know. I make mm. my first character is for testing the game out, you know, and figuring everything out about it. You know, trying to get everything maxed out and get a feel for everything, and then if I want to focus on specific things, then I make other characters for that, you know. And Bloodborne really rubbed me the wrong way with its fucking stupid upgrade system of giving you one blood rock per playthrough. So I really, really fucking hope that Dark Souls 3 has infinite farming possibilities for all the resources. And merch all merchants who sell infinites, you know? Make them expensive, that's fine. I don't mind farming the source to buy them, and I don't mind farming the items. Just make sure that I can farm them, you know? 
Because what I, uh... Oh, shit. Whoa. Because what I love about the farming in Dark Souls is, for the most part, it's totally optional. You only farm if you really want to farm things, you know? Which I think is what a lot of games get wrong. And it's something I, I'm not a fan of, generally, with a lot of the games I play. Um, shit, they're going to follow me all the way back, aren't they? I need to chug. No, they've got aggro range. Uh, so what I was saying, uh, one thing I do have an issue with with a lot of modern games particularly MMOs like and especially Destiny is the fact that they if you want to keep advancing and keep playing the game and getting stronger because you, and you know these are the kind of games that require it you have to put hours and hours into just farming shit and not being guaranteed to get it you know whereas in the beautiful thing about Dark Souls game is for the most part farming is optional you can generally get decent you know you can generally get decently powerful and all the gear you need by the game just giving it to you, you know, just by playing it. And farming only comes if you want to go that extra step, but that's your choice. Like, for example, even with rare items like the Aura armor, it's not something you need, but it's something you had the option of farming. But you didn't have to farm it, because the game didn't require you to farm it, you know? And that's something, that's a design choice I fully I fully uh, applaud with the Souls franchise, is that for the uh, farming in these games is pretty much optional for the most part. It's never something you need to do because you can always get good enough at the game that you never need to farm souls. You know? I mean, yeah, there are some people. G Wait, what did I need? Soul of Lost and Dead. I mean, you know, there are probably some people so good at this game they can fucking complete it on their soul level one and more power to them if they can do that. And that's why I love this game, and that's why one of the one of the reasons why I love this franchise because farming is always optional. The game will almost always generally give you the stuff you need to complete it. And to, you know, do decently. Because as I said, you know, when I found the, the Aura Sam, it's because I wanted it, not because I needed it. And you know, so it was my choice to farm it because I wanted the gear. I didn't mind the bullshit that went into going it because I, it was gear I wanted but not gear I needed. And I think that a game should give you everything you need without, you know, without too many bullshit strings attached to it. And that's why I hate games like Destiny and most MMOs. Because I'm not a fan of farming for the stuff I need, you know, to, to play the game. But yeah, after that long spiel about farming, let's go through this fog. And, and you know, that, as I said, that's one of the reasons why I love this franchise so much. But yeah, let's talk about the Shrine of a Man, because I haven't really said much about it. This place sucks. And you know what? I don't know how, but it got worse. Seriously. It got fucking worse in this version of the game. Because now we've got an NPC we've got to deal with. We've got more of those little fucking bastards in the water, whatever they are. And I think there's like the same number of these pictures, or maybe only one less or one more than there should be. Or than there was. I hate this place so much. I mean, the most annoying thing about this place to me is the f and there's an old knight there who also, also, be honest, guys, first time through this area, who fucking noticed him until you were right upon him? I didn't even see him. Seriously, I never saw him my first time here until I was right fucking next to him and he aggroed on me. Shit, I can't look on from that range, really. It's not a lot of damage. Oh, he's got some health. I thought he's got fire resistance. Yeah, I'm going to say he's got a lot of health. <laughs> Wait, what's the damage counter showing? Hang on. Shit, I didn't see it. Let's see how much damage a uh, Great Coy's Fireball actually does. 600 and something. So yeah, he's just got a lot of health. 400. Yep. Oh shit guys, I've got to cut this one here because we're getting to the 10 minute mark and I don't want this video to stretch over length, you know. So, uh, yeah, I'll cut this one here and we'll get, we'll keep moving in the next one and we'll kill the NPC.